On Unicast, that was Last Dinosaurs with Zoom. Now, uh, as I said, you got a special guest in the studio today, again, so it's very exciting stuff. Um, I'm talking to John from the Honey Pies. How you doing, John? Good, thank you. Good, man. Hey, if you want to put the headphones on, man, just, you know, get the whole experience. That should be good. <laughs> I'm all about professionalism here on Saturday Sessions. Can Indeed. you hear yourself? Yes. Brilliant. Um, so, John, how are you today, anyway? Um, good, thank you. You mentioned before a bit of sore throat. Yeah, yeah, I had uh, too big a night last night. And, but I sound better now than I did this morning. What did you do last night? Um, I went to Barrio last night. Uh-huh. And uh, then then to, I don't know, just too long a night, too long and late a night. I walked home, <laughs> I think I got home about 4.30 in the morning and then not enough sleep and I woke up sounding like Tom Waits this morning and I sound a little bit better now. Wow, dude. Resting up for the gig, I, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, so first off, um, for the dear listeners who aren't really familiar with the Honey Pies, could you tell us a bit um, about who plays in the band and what you guys all do? Yeah, sure. Uh, it's myself. Um, uh, my brother Marcus plays the drums. Uh, Tony plays lead guitar. And uh, my friend Tom uh, plays the bass guitar. And what do you do? And, uh, I sing and I play guitar. Brilliant. Okay. Um, so as I do with all my interviews, um, I sort of researched as much as I could about you guys um, before today. Um, but I had a lot of trouble finding a, uh, out about your roots. So I was going to ask you, like, so you're a band that's released two studio albums in two years. Um, yep. Think of England in 2010 and Car- Carpe Carp? Carpe Carp, yeah. Carpe Carp. Seize the Carp. <laughs> in 2011. Um, but when did you guys first start playing together? It's pretty boring. That's probably why we don't talk about it a lot. But it's just like um, <laughs> I was in a band that broke up, and then um, I started playing, uh, played a few shows as the Honey Pies, and it was just me because I didn't really like playing by my own name. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and then uh, my friend Matt Haywood, who is in some bands, I don't know if you've ever met him, but he he was like, oh, there's this guy Tony, and you know, you should just meet him. And it was just a gradual sort of. Tom's an old high school friend of mine, and mm-hmm. uh, it just was. It's a pretty boring story, really. Just started playing and. Well, it's still nice. It's we still sometimes think it'd be cool to make up a more interesting story sh- about how we should, met. Should like yeah. something crazy, like you met from. In my old band, we used to actually we used to make up these like, elaborate stories of how we met because it was really boring as well. So we'd say we met at hairdressing school <laughs> and like all these things like this. And how did that go down? They pr- we we got that printed in the advertiser. Actually, they said we <laughs> yeah we said uh, we wrote this line. She pretty much like let us write. She like let us write it almost and just printed it word for word and it was like wow. we met in um, hairdressing school and we bonded <laughs> over our love of the Beatles not of their music but their hair and then initially oh. like, later we found out about their music and they printed every word it was really funny oh wow that's shocking that is great great <laughs> publication there by the advertiser great journalism <laughs> oh no then they're not gonna they're gonna get cross at me but that's alright <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> interesting story there um, so, in, if they're going to get crossy, you a lot of bands do actually. Like, there's a lot of stuff that gets printed in like Rip It Off and DV, and you can tell they take like they're taking the piss a little bit, and then it sort of gets print. Like, I don't know if they, yeah, I don't know, but it's, sarcasm doesn't read very well. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no, when, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Like, when you're talking to someone on, like online, it's like, it's like yeah. being sarcastic. Or not? No, yeah, you don't really know. Um, so your first album, um, back to the band, I suppose. Um, your first. Your first your first album, Think of England, got a pretty good reception um, with good feedback from a lot of prominent me- prominent, prominent people in the media, uh, such as Zan Rowe and stuff. Um, and then in the following year, you belted out your second record, Carpa Carp. Yep. Um, that was towards the end of last year, was it? Yeah, they both came out towards the end of their year. So um, we're trying to do one a year. So we're, wow. just, we're just getting them under the wire. Uh, and last, yeah, the carpet cut came in, I think it was December 16th, so we had a few weeks to spare and just make the Jesus, deadline. Jesus, man. Yeah. That's pretty intense. Yeah, yeah. How, how was that? Was it a sort of rushed sort of recording and writing uh, experience? No, not really. Or did you just have a whole shitload of songs saved up you I've needed got, to get out? I've kind of got a big shitload of songs, yeah, so just sort of pick and choose the ones I like to use. And uh, it was it was actually a lot less rushed than the first one. The first one we really rushed to get it, and it was the cliche thing where we got the CDs like on the day of the recording, which is like something that happens to like Damn. a lot of bands. Like that day they come, sometimes they don't come, and you don't have. But the this one we had them. They they arrived like I think like three weeks before the launch, and they were just sitting in my room. It was this wonderful, really non-rushed Pre- feeling. Preparation. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. I've never had that because we. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was good feeling. <laughs> um, do you know how that that record's really been doing? I mean, we've been playing a fair bit, um, a few tracks off that, um, and it's been doing pretty well. Like how, in your eyes, been, yeah. on the I think, I think in terms of airplay, like uh, it's been getting a lot more than the first one did, and the first one did alright as well. So it's we're pretty happy with it. Just sort of hoping that everyone 
that we do is a little bit more successful than the one before and build it up sort of thing build it up like a ladder yeah hopefully yeah there you go um okay yeah to me personally like uh, i've been listening to the album again like the last couple of uh, days since we sort of organized this interview um it's sort of really contrasting sounding album like half the tracks are really sort of very indie pop like my oh my oh me oh my girl and houndstooth and then you get some really sort of grungy i suppose you could say rock tracks like i heart uh, new york guy fawkes day and in particular, one of my favourite ones, the track Y2K. Yeah, cool. Um, the whole record, yeah, it sounds like a mixture of The Strokes and The Cloud Nothings. You know The Cloud Nothings? No, I don't. No, um, well, there's this band out of you. The US. Cloud Nothings? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, unimportant. They're younger than me, though, and I'll they're pretty full on, yeah. But um, but it's also got a really lo-fi surf pop sound. Um, and with some, Brit, as your website says, Brit pop influences. What sort of bands and music influence you, dude? Like, it's a very different sounding record. Oh, cool. Uh, thanks. Uh, we, we, it's pretty varied in the band. Like, uh, uh, all of us have varied taste, and then the four of us have varied taste between the four of us as well. So it's, it's a lot of everything. Um, I really like, um, I like pop songs. Like, I really like, I've been listening to, like, a lot of, um, you know, like, 60s and 50s, like, girl bands lately, and like the Shirelles <laughs> and stuff like that lately. Oh, yeah. I love all that kind of stuff, and I like the Beatles, and I like, uh, I don't know. I like I like kind of, I like pop stuff. And then uh, Tom Tom in the band, he likes he's a lot better with like the new stuff that's come out. Me and Tony, we tend to just listen to old stuff. The classics. Anything new, we're like, oh, what is this? What? <laughs> not not always. Damn kids. Yeah, a little bit. Not too. Like I'm I'm playing it up a bit, but we are a little bit like that. And Tom's mm-hmm. more up to date with the new stuff that's coming out. Marcus is probably the same too. So it's a it's a big mix. It's a so bit it's everything. Split between the middle sort of thing. You get your old and then you new. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, do you sort of find yourself comparing music you hear to this, your own stuff? Uh, no, I, I, I often, like, people always, like, just before, like, people will be like, oh, you sound like this band, it'll be a band I haven't heard of, and then I go and listen to them, and sometimes I, then I kind of fall in love with them after. And, um, Unless you don't hate them after hearing them. No, no, some, sometimes it's really weird with like, what they say, though, but sometimes I can't hear it. Sometimes I can, you know, definitely hear it. I don't know, I really like, uh, if I was trying to explain it, as, as one band, I was. I think the Libertines is the closest thing, but it's sort of not really the same. It's a bit more poppy and uh, sweet, maybe than that. But it's uh, that's probably the closest one I've, I can always come. Okay. I can always go to. No, it's interesting. Um, so, speaking of all the different sort of backgrounds you guys have in music, who writes? Who generally writes the songs? What's the sort of arrangement? Uh, there? I write the songs. You write all the songs. Yeah. Ah, so they're like your backup band. No, 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 no. They're sorry, all actually. Guys, if you're listening, I'm sorry, I guess. I was thinking of it like in a, uh, in a, in a. They say like the director of a movie is like the least talented person. He's like the bossiest person there, but he's like the least talented. Like he's surrounded by people. That's part kind of the band. That's, like, uh, it's very humble of you, dude. Not really. No, <laughs> it's humble. Yeah, not really. Like, don't, like uh, the three of them like really, really fucking good at what they do, and mm-hmm. I don't. Yeah, it's good, but I'm sort of the bossy one, but not not not. But not so much. You sort of ease off a bit. I try to, but I'm pretty bossy. <laughs> <laughs> At least you know what you want. That's a man who knows what he wants is a very powerful thing, right? Yeah. Let's just go with that. Okay, let's just roll with that. <laughs> you said it with such like authority that I'm just going to go with it. Yeah, you know, you got to take chat. No, I'm just. <laughs> um, so let's move on. Um, so in the past, you've toured with and played with the likes of many sort of great Australian bands and artists, um, such as the Jezebels, Lily Cheetah out of Adelaide, uh, the John Still Singers, Oh Mercy, and even Tim Rogers, a yeah. huge name in Australian music. Um, all these artists are doing sort of amazing things in music. Um, how was it like playing with them? That's pretty huge, dude. It's all, it's all, it's really varied. Like some, like um, sometimes we got to meet them after, and sometimes not. And uh, it's pretty fun. I, I always find the shows like I always look forward to those shows so much. And sometimes they're good, and sometimes they're yeah. But like the I always find the, the best shows are always these like in these shows that we didn't. Like we played a show last week with um, the Ocean Party, who are a cool <laughs> band from Sydney. But you know, not a big, not a big band not like a Tim Rogers, someone. So we weren't, we yeah. went into the not that excited. And then uh, at the end of it, we were just like, that was, we felt really good about it. And we, you know, so I find sometimes those, maybe it's the expectations sometimes. Yeah, yeah. They're not disappointing, but they're not quite. They're not, they're not as exciting as you always think they're going to be. And then sometimes, yeah, sometimes those little shows are the ones I always tend to feel the best about afterwards. Sort of diamond in the rough. Yeah. And you're not worrying about it, you know, a week when we, yeah. you know, we don't practice as much and we just, we're just a bit more relaxed and have a good whole, time. Yeah, cool, man. Mm-hmm. Um, so, obviously, no stories to share with, like, run-ins with those sort of bands uh, or anything like that? Not really. No. I had a heaps about... Uh, I had a heaps embarrassing thing with Tim Rogers because he made a joke uh, about us. He was like, oh, they've got a... What you, I can't remember what he said. He said... Very modernist sound? Yeah, possibly? he said, as a... 
as a modernist, I appreciate the modernity. And everyone laughed, and he was like, like he was making fun of us, and then he was like, no, 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 no like, I like them. And then he was like, oh, I'll talk to him after, like, kind of like he was worried. <laughs> sort this out. Sort yeah, so then after, I was like, hey, man, just thanks for having us. And But then he seemed, like, uh, really weirded out by me talking to him. So it was, really? Really, it was really awkward, actually. You're a very odd man. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's quite funny, though. Like, he, he played, he actually played, like, that night he played in both, like, he played in two of the bands that were playing. Like, it was sort of like us, and then it was like, Two different <laughs> bands with Tim Rogers in it. So it was Tim Rogers' experience. It's like two and a half hours of it. It was really, it was a really good show. But that's pretty cool. The Honey Pies got to be included in that. Though. Yeah, we were happy. That was a real freak thing too. That was like I think someone pulled out, or it was just like a, or it was like a, it was almost like a secret show. I just remember it was we didn't get much notice, and it was just this huge, just smashed together in like the last second. So. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah, cool, man. Um, okay, you're on Saturday sessions for Unicast Internet Radio. Um, you're listening to Brendan. That's me having a chat with John from the Honey Pies. Um, I reckon we'll go to a song now. Uh, but then come back and do you want to play a bit of a live track for us? Yeah, sure. You've got your guitar on you. Yep. Um, prove it to the listeners. Give it a bit of a whack. Yeah, there you go. It's a guitar. I'm not lying to you. Um, so, yeah, I reckon we'll go to a song and then we'll continue this. You might hear some live music in a minute on Saturday Sessions. But right now, let's play some Bonnie Bear. He was in the country real recently. You're on Saturday Sessions. Saturday Sessions with Brennan Cooper. Hey, you're on Unicast and in the studio still. John, joining us. How you doing, bud? I'm not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. Brilliant. Um, if you just want to use um, that one, I should have told you. That's all right. We're back, we're back in business. You know, it's live because we're screwing around. Okay. Um, so, so that was a lovely song you played with us before. Um, Thank you. Hopefully, I'll get that one uploaded onto the site so yes, we can sir. let people listen. Um, all right. Now, I suppose maybe I should ask you some more questions. Um, now, before the last track, uh, the last few tracks we played, um, we were talking a bit about the past of the band, and I wanted to ask you one more sort of question. Uh, seems it's sort of fitting since you're an Adelaide band. Yeah, sure. um, growing up here in Adelaide and playing lots of shows at local <clears throat> pubs and bars quite frequently, and you did say that last night you had a bit of a big night. Yes. Is the pull of a few sneaky drinks always there when you play? Do you like to drink? Do you like to indulge? Um, in I'm, beers on stage. I've gone always on this. Like, I never used to drink. And then for a while, then I was just getting so nervous on stage. So then I was like, oh, I should start drinking before we play. I don't know. It sort of depends on the show, <laughs> free, I think. Free drinks. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Because I just get so nervous. Like, I don't I don't find it very natural to, to play for people. So sometimes just one mm-hmm. or two, at least, is, <clears throat> takes the edge off a bit. But then too much is bad. Really bad. Has that happened before? Um. yeah, yeah. Uh, what but, happened? Come on. Oh, uh, there's been there's been times. I was telling you before, um, not on, but before when we were walking here, like uh, whenever we go to Sydney and things get really really <laughs> rough, and we went. Man, this was actually one of those times it worked out because the show was really. I'm remembering one of my favorite shows that I ever played, but I just broken up with someone. I went to Sydney and I just I just got blotto, mm-hmm. as did we all, and uh, we played this small room uh, it's at world bar in sydney it's in this small room upstairs yep. you probably if you can get 30 or 40 people in there it just looks fucking packed out like yeah. you don't need you don't need a lot of people to get it and it was none of us can really remember it but we've seen photos of it since and we're like looks like we're having a really good time like this you can't like, remember playing I remember sure. all i do remember i do remember one of my friends came um <laughs> who hadn't seen me in uh in a while, and then they were there at the show, and then after the show, they didn't come and say hi. They just left because we were just being really um, rowdy. Fun, fun. Yeah, and some backpackers were yelling for us to play Wonderwall, and we told them to go fuck themselves. Oh, cool, as you, as you would, you know. <laughs> it was real fun. It was a real kind of like punk show. It was real fun. Like, we don't really get to play like that. It was just a big mess. And Maybe a new direction for the Honey Pies. Yeah, I think it depends on who's there. Like, we kind of <laughs> got, like, it's sort of what you were saying before about the got a lot of different kinds of songs so it's sort of sometimes when we feel like oh this is a kind of a rowdy crowd you know we can pull out the more rocky stuff and sometimes we'll play a little show mm-hmm. and we, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of cool we can kind of adapt to our <laughs> surroundings a little bit yeah because you do play acoustic sets as well like tomorrow yeah. you're playing at the Ed Castle is it? oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> whoa what am I, your band manager now? Like, your tour manager? Gotta give you 10%. Yeah, okay, we'll sort that out later. <laughs> oh, well, that's a good year, I suppose, adaptive to sort of what you play. Yeah. That's something, a valuable thing to have. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Do you have a favourite venue to play in Adelaide? Uh, I think, for me, it's got to be the Grace Emily. I really love the Grace Emily. Yeah? Um, for you, like, I mean, one thing about it is, like, um, it's a place that people just go... Um, you don't have... I mean, you do advertise, but if, if you were to just... If George, who runs the place that night, was like, "Can you play tonight?" Mm-hmm. and uh, I'm, I don't have time to advertise it, and you know, just you'll just turn up and play. 
there'd be people there. Like people just go there. Um, yeah, they they are uh, adventurous and they just. <coughs> They, don't, they just want to see some music and... Uh, I mean, that place is a really good place to find sort of like, you know, local talent. Yeah, like, yeah. There's always something on. Like, even on your Monday nights, it's packed out. Oh, yeah, Monday nights are stuff. great. Yeah. yeah. No, so I think that, but there's there's a few really good ones. Um, the Jade's another one, but that's, uh, that's a whole... It's a shame. Of fish as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we were talking about that last week, but we won't bring it up again. Yeah, it's just it's just sad. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, so so tonight you are playing Arcade Lane with a bunch of other, other great Adelaide acts, including Gold Bloom. Gordy, Gordy Little, is it? I, I think Jordy, that's how. Jordy, Gordy. I don't know. I, I don't know anything Georgie? about him. I don't, I, yeah, Jordy Gord, Little. Gordy, Gordy. I feel like Gordy. Gordy. Yeah, I don't I'm know. I'm feeling Gordy. <laughs> that sounds good. It sounds yeah. <laughs> and um, of course, Luke Million. Um, that's that's entertaining. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, I think so. Um, and of course, with the four words, regulars. Um, you've played a few four words um with the crew before. Um, how the crowd usually receive it at those shows? Uh, pretty good. I think uh, the crowd they put on such a good party like they always get such great crowds out and mm. it's always been pretty good and then uh everyone sticks around after and it's just a, they put they just know how to throw a good good gig that's why i like doing the gigs with them oh cool man um and like what about crowds elsewhere elsewhere when you're playing other shows like at the grace and stuff how, how do they sort of receive your uh, honey pies there at the grace we go down pretty well i think that's probably one of our more friendly places but oh mm-hmm. um, man you play some dog- like not not just you know sometimes you <laughs> some, i was gonna say it's not dodgy just because people don't like it. I mean, they don't have to like it. But yeah, so, some places you play, you know, they don't like it at all. Yeah. But. I mean, how about when you go into state, like you said, in Sydney, apart from that one punk show you played, how about the crowds? You know, we go p- pretty well. They're usually a small crowd because, you know, we don't we don't have a very big following or anything, but mm-hmm. we usually go down, I think, all right, yeah. They keep inviting us back, so that we must It's always a good right. time. Yeah. Progresses from there, uh, of course, yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, coming up over the next few, m- well, the next month, you've got a few more sh- gigs in Adelaide. Um, 5th of April, you're at the Wheat Sheet. Um, I don't know if you know this. Yeah, I know that. So, <laughs> um, at the 12th of I know that one because that's my friend's birthday and I think I'm in trouble for playing that night, so Ooh. I remember that one. Sorry. Well, just give him a happy birthday now and he'll be fine, right? <laughs> happy birthday, Steve. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, the 12th and 13th, you're playing at the Ed Castle um, and then you're supporting Ballpark Music at Jive. Yeah, that's going to be cool. How'd you get that one? Uh, Two they, gigs for that one, 18th and 19th. They just emailed us. They emailed us last time um, they were here, um, and we were busy. We couldn't do it. And then uh, they just, which is, you know, you, sometimes you think they might never call again. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they did. They called us up again, and um, and then it sold out. And so they said, oh, do you want to do another show the night before? And we said, yeah, of course we do. And, yeah, it's That's right, yeah. have you Have you met them before? No, no, I haven't. I haven't. I've never seen them play before either. It's gonna be, That's exciting. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Yeah, so that's on the uh, th- uh, on the eighteenth and nineteenth of April. Uh, yeah, I think it's a Wednesday and a Thursday, but I might be wrong. Wednesday, Thursday. I yeah. So. yeah, um, I'm actually thinking um, I'm going to get those guys in for a chat as well. See what I'm doing. So that should be very exciting. Mm. Um, and speaking of new, so you bought out two albums in two years, as you said. You're going for the third one, a trifecta. Three I would like three. to. It would be if we got. I think we would do it. I think we would do it. How's the writing going there? The writing's good. The writing's about done. It's 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 always a money thing with us. Like it's just it's, will we have the money in time? But mm-hmm. I think we we might. Are um, you, have you been looking at studios and stuff to record in or anything? Yeah, actually. Uh, well, we're just starting to do that because because uh, I'm going to travel in May and June, and so it really needs to be locked in before I go. Yeah. So that. I don't have to worry about it and come back in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're sort of starting to look around. We've looked around at two places so far. Mm-hmm. And um, then people's hard too. Like, you know, there's, there's, you can find a good place, but then, you know, that you have to bring someone along. To yeah, place. yeah, so definitely. There's a, lot to, there's a lot of decisions to be made and we're sort of just starting to do that now. Yeah, and how, how did the recording process of the last album go? It was good. It was it was fun. It was uh, we did we worked with uh, Dave Crow and uh, he's in a band called Mammoth Logic and... Uh, mm-hmm. It was really good. It was just really. Uh, it was sort of what I was talking about before with like slow. You know, if you feel like you're making slow progress, that's good because um, we did both albums in five days. That's sort of. Jeez. We might even try to do the next one. For, that's sort of the feels about like the right amount of time. But we just got heaps more done in the five days this time. Did you sleep? Uh yeah, we slept a little bit. We had <laughs> we had pretty intense. The last I think the last few days were like twelve, twelve, and sixteen hours long. So they were really long days. But um, it's full on man, Jesus. Yeah, we slept. You, yeah, occasionally. <laughs> Except occasionally, you can have naps during the day as well. Because, like, um, you know, the first few days, all four of us really need to be on our feet because mm-hmm. we get the live takes, and then after that, it becomes really like solo, like one person doing something at a time. So, yep. you know, sometimes you would get tired, or you just be like, I have to get out of here for a few hours, and you know, Tony can you, t- you know, mm-hmm. someone, someone would go in and do their bit for a while. You might have a nap or a snack, or mm-hmm. yeah, but. 
Yeah, it's pretty. It, it's a very tiring thing, but I'm sort of love. I love it's extremely tiring, but I kind of love every minute of it. So it's a real, it's a real rush to be in the studio. Cool, man. Uh, all right. Well, I might go to track, and then do you want to play us another song? Yeah, sure. Cool. Tell the listener what you're going to play, and to just sort of like make make him excited. The one that I picked. Yeah, the the one. Well, yeah. Actually, yeah, that's a very good idea. Or, or <laughs> I forget. So I, I asked I John here um, what song you'd like me to play. You picked um, Kanye West, Lost in the World, featuring Bon Iver. Yeah. Why, why'd you pick this song? Uh, just because you picked it before and, uh, yeah, I mean, you played Bon Iver just before and um, mm -hmm. I like Kanye and yeah, what up? <laughs> well, there you go. Um, this is Lost in the World I'm up in the from Kanye West. You're on Saturday Session. Stick around. More live music coming up next. Sessions with Brandon Cooper. So, um, you're gonna, I hope we're going to be hearing some of this stuff uh, tonight. Oh, probably not that one, but the first one I played. Oh, yeah. I see how it is. <laughs> that was a special just for your listeners. Just for my listeners. Like, oh, thank you, man. And they thank you. I Whoops. Can hear them. I can hear them thanking me. Yeah, yeah thousands and thousands. In my head. <laughs> Everyone loves me. I hope so. I can hear it. I'm sure they do. I, right. I think, I think you can hear them. Yeah. yeah. They're banging on the door. Um, we, better, we better get you out of here because they're going to come hunt you down now. Oh, Bit of a hard throw, man. It's it's hard left. <laughs> well, thanks again, John from the Honey Pies. Um, thank you very much for coming in. Thanks, so. having a bit of a chat and a play. Always good fun. You're always welcome here in Saturday sessions. I might take you up on that. I might turn up every week. Oh man, co-host. Here we go. We'll sort something out there. <laughs> we have had some pretty good chemistry. I, maybe we should think about co-hosts. I like something. this chemistry. Yeah, definitely. What, what do you reckon we could do? Something crazy. It's got to be something. I don't know. Let's think about it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll stew. We'll stew on that one. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks again. <laughs> Moving on. Thanks again. <laughs> um, for Get coming out of my in. studio. <laughs> yeah, stop screwing around. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks again, John, for coming in. Um, the Honey Pies are, of course, playing tonight um, at the Arcade Lane. What time do you kick off? Uh, I think it starts, uh, DJ start from 8, and I think we're on about 11, but... Uh um, I'd get there early because the DJs used to pay really great music and Goldblum are going to be on soon. From 8. From 8. From 8. Come in at 8 and yeah. you guys will be on about... About 11 we're planning but you know, you never know. It could be a bit earlier, it could be a bit later. Probably about 11. Keep you on your toes. Yeah. Brilliant. All right, man. Well, good luck for that and good luck for the um, ballpark music Thank dates you. as well. Thank you. Um, wish you all the best and we'll hopefully speak to you soon. Cool. All right, thanks, man. All right, we'll go to a song now. How, how's that sound, guys? Um, ballpark music. That sounds fun. Go to Saturday Sessions, Unicast. Stick around. We got some stuff to do.